Everything is chaos here. The suspense is almost unbearable. We are reduced to quarter rations and no coffee, and nobody can soldier without coffee. I'm Kyle Dalton. I work at the National Museum of Civil War Medicine, where I use my skills as a historian every day. And I love cooking. Not that I'm a professional, but I can combine my passions of history and cooking to explore the way food impacted people of the past. How did food and drink help and hurt the soldiers and patients of the Civil War era? That's what we're here to find out. I think it makes sense to begin at the beginning. If you start your day the same way that I do, you brew a cup of coffee before the sleep is out of your eyes. This is exactly how soldiers in the Civil War started their day, too. Unlike us, it's also how they started their lunch, and their dinner, and everything in between. According to the American Battlefield Trust, the United States was importing 182 million pounds of coffee each year at the beginning of the war. A mug or two a day might not be that bad for you, but soldiers during the Civil War were drinking a lot more than I do. The average American consumes 9 pounds of coffee per year. Yeah, I probably drink more than that, but Union soldiers were issued 36 pounds per year. Such gargantuan consumption led to gastrointestinal problems that probably exacerbated the most common affliction and cause of death for the entire war, dysentery. And it certainly contributed to sleep deprivation and caused anxiety. Despite the massive amounts of coffee available, people of the mid-19th century were always looking for ways to stretch it. For my first recipe, I'll be using the wildly popular Beaton's Book of Household Management, first published in London in 1861. Miss Beaton gives this recommendation on how to make a chicory-infused instant coffee. Let the coffee be put into a filter with the chicory and pour slowly over it the above proportion of boiling water, one pint. When it has all filtered through, warm the coffee sufficiently to bring it to the simmering point, but do not allow it to boil. Then filter it a second time. Put it into a clear and dry bottle, cork it well, and it will remain good for several days. Two tablespoons of this essence will be found particularly useful to those persons who have to rise extremely early, and having only the milk to make boiling is very easily and quickly prepared. Caffeine withdrawal is not well studied for the Civil War, but soldiers must have felt its effects, especially Southern troops. This was a problem because coffee was almost entirely imported. Coffee first came to the New World in the early 18th century, and by the Civil War, Brazil was the foremost exporter on Earth. From 1850 to 1950, Brazil produced more coffee than the rest of the world combined. This coffee was produced exclusively by slave labor. Brazil was the last nation in the New World to outlaw slavery, a full generation after the end of our Civil War. After the war, Brazil hosted a colony of refugee ex-Confederates, where Emperor Dom Pedro II encouraged them to recreate the slave labor cotton economy of the South. Despite the ideological difference, Union soldiers drank Brazilian coffee, and in huge quantities. Their blockade prevented Confederate soldiers from enjoying the same luxury. British observer Arthur Fremantle traveled throughout the Confederacy and followed rebel units in 1863. We live principally on bacon and coffee. The loss of coffee afflicts the Confederates even more than the loss of spirits, and they exercise their ingenuity in devising substitutes, which are not generally very successful. In 1863, the same year that Fremantle made these observations, the blockade was tightening belts throughout the southern states. The Confederates got more creative with their substitutes. The author of the Confederate Receipt Book recommended this recipe with a readily available ingredient. Take sound, ripe acorns, wash them while in the shell, dry them, and parch them until they open. Take the shell off. Roast with a little bacon fat, 
and you will have a splendid cup of coffee. There is, of course, a problem with this recipe. If acorns aren't processed before they're consumed, they can exacerbate or even cause the already deadly effects of dysentery, something that, as I said earlier, was devastating to soldiers of the Civil War. After removing the skins from the acorn nuts, we can leach the acorns by soaking them in water and squeezing them out an hour at a time. That should make them easier to drink and safer. Acorn coffee was not to everyone's taste. A reporter for the Albany, Georgia Patriot wrote in 1861 that the acorn need only be tried once to be discarded. This is probably because the acorns weren't being properly prepared. Instead, he recommended sweet potato coffee, insisting that when properly prepared, I defy anyone to detect the difference between it and a cup of pure Rio. To be fair, the recipe called for a little coffee to pull off the effect. Peel your potatoes and slice them rather thin. Dry them in the air or on a stove. Then cut into pieces small enough to go into the coffee mill. Then grind it. Two tablespoons full of ground coffee and three or four of ground potatoes will make eight or nine cups of coffee clear, pure, and well tasted. Some of you might disagree with me, but coffee is not necessary to sustain life. Coffee is a luxury item. So too is cream. So if you're going to be making substitutes for something you don't need to survive, why not go all the way? The 1863 Confederate Receipt Book, the same book that gave us our acorn recipe, gives this suggestion for a cream substitute. Beat the white of an egg to a froth. Put to it a very small lump of butter and mix well. Then turn the coffee to it gradually so that it may not curdle. If perfectly done, it will be an excellent substitute for cream. Now it's time to find out how these all stack up. I challenged my girlfriend, Emily Hubner, to a blind taste test. And in the interest of fairness, I'll be trying them as well. <laughs> you seem a little nervous. <laughs> nervous. I've been seeing you put these together. <laughs> and what, what do you know about what you're doing today? Um, I know that these are Civil War coffee substitutes and stretchers. Um, I know one of them involves some artificial creamer made with egg whites and <laughs> something else. So. <laughs> All right. How are you feeling? A little nervous. <laughs> uh, unlike you, I actually saw what went into making this, so I'm a little concerned uh, about some of them. Uh, the process was kind of gross for, for a couple of these. Which one are you most concerned about? The acorn, honestly. The, the acorn one, like the process of making it was so involved, and every step of the way I was like, I don't know if this is going to work. <laughs> uh, so, so we'll see. Uh, we'll see what happens. Uh, so uh, just to give you an idea of what's, what's happening, the cup on your right, uh, the one with our, our logo on it, that's just regular coffee. That's just coffee I got at the grocery store. Okay. The rest of these are mystery brews. Okay. And, uh, <laughs> and uh, I want you, as you taste them, to tell me uh, your thoughts. What does it taste like? Do you like it? Do you not like it? Uh, what's the texture like? Do you think you do that for me? Yeah. Yep, I think you can. <laughs> cool. All right, let's get started. Uh, so let's start with the control, uh, just the regular grocery store coffee. Uh, it's not as good as the stuff we usually get, so I'd like to hear your opinions on it. Okay. Yes. Yep, that's coffee. And, uh, <laughs> yeah, it's actually good job brewing this. There's like not much acid in it. Um, tastes like black coffee. I think scientifically we need to have you start with the control coffee. That makes sense. Not my favorite. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I don't know out of, of these, but not my favorite coffee. It tastes a little bit like, I don't want to say gas station coffee because it's not that bad, but it's very acidy. Uh, it it's, doesn't have a lot of flavor to it compared to other coffees that, that I enjoy. Um, it's not you know, terrible, but it's it's not bad. It's just not, you know, great. It's not the coffee that I would choose to drink, but I'm going to drink more of it anyway. 
All right, we're uh, moving on to our first mystery tankard glass. Our first mystery cup. Now, you said this is the one you're most nervous about? This is the one that scares me the most. And why is that? Um, there is something in this that... I wonder if this is the one with egg in it, because there's something floating in it. And the other things that you made are strained in such a way that... I don't think there would be as much stuff on top. Are you, did you get a shot at the top of this? Like, people need to see what this looks like. I'm not being a coward. I think I did, yeah. Uh, okay, we'll, we'll be sure to insert that This here. is the biggest cup. Why did you do that? You don't have to drink the so, whole thing. You just have to taste it. Okay. <laughs> Go ahead. Okay. The smell is actually not terrible. There's something that smells really weird in this lineup, and I thought it was this, but it's not this. So... <laughs> Totally mild. Doesn't taste like much. Tastes vaguely of coffee. Doesn't taste bad. Um, I would strain it of whatever is floating in it, but um, it wouldn't be a favorite. But, you know, if it were at a meeting with donuts and coffee, I would probably drink the coffee. So. Do you uh, have, so, so you have a guess on which one this is? Um, I no longer think it's the egg one. Unless, did you add the eggs just to regular coffee? The uh, cream substitute, just regular coffee. That is the cream substitute. You're right. That's the cream substitute. I got it. I to got regular it. Regular coffee. Yes. Okay. It tastes like regular coffee plus some weird stuff. This is basically like keto coffee. <laughs> <laughs> so if someone told you that there was cream in that, would you believe them? I would think it's some sort of weird oil-based creamer. All right. So this is the substitute. It looks atrocious. This looks like a Florida swamp. And I don't know why anybody would willingly ingest this, so let's go. You did set the task for yourself. Hmm. The taste is actually not that bad. Like, it's it's milder than the regular coffee, which is weird to me. I don't know if that's the butter that's in there. Um, the texture is super weird. The texture is, you can tell that there's egg in there. It's, it's not fun. But the taste isn't that bad, actually. It just looks like hell. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I could and would drink it. It's just weird. Would you prefer it to no fake creamer in the coffee? Or should, would you just prefer to just drink it black? I think that depends on the coffee. With this coffee, I would prefer this creamer. Huh. Yeah, uh, it, it kind of, it does take away a lot of the like hard hitting kind of acidity that comes with this coffee. So, yeah, I would say that this improves that one. Not visually, but it does improve it. Uh, so, yeah, I, I'd say it's better than no cream for some coffees. For this one, definitely. All right, let's move on to the copper cup. Okay. Uh, what are your thoughts on that, just from the look of it? This one is white, which is interesting. I don't remember you talking about making anything that would create this color. I thought, unless you've been keeping it a secret from me. <laughs> and so, um, yeah, this cup is very hot. Um, oh, this one has a bit of a weird smell. I don't love the <laughs> smell of the aroma. So let's go. Did you put cream in this? It tastes milky. It's, it is very milky, yeah. Do you have a guess on what that one would be? It's almost a wild card out of the lineup. There's so much milk flavor in this that it's really hard to get it. I think um, it might be a little bit savory. This might be the one that includes bacon roasted chicory. It does include chicory. This is the essence of coffee. <gasps> okay. <laughs> uh, the instructions called specifically for it to be made with milk. Okay. So, uh, but yeah, I, I when I started pouring it in, I thought, wow, that's weird. Like, there's barely any essence of coffee in this. This is kind of a latte, what you've made here. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Let's try the uh, essence of coffee. Oh, it's very sweet. Um, I can I can taste the coffee, but barely. And it's funny because when I was making it, it was this like really soupy, like 
like really kind of gross looking essence of coffee. This like watery, uh, viscous substance. I thought it was gonna like hit really hard, uh, but this is it's it's like a really light latte. Uh, it doesn't have have a lot in there that's that's hard hitting at all. Uh, it's pretty pleasant actually. It's quite sweet. Let's move on to uh, the next one. Okay. Do you have any thoughts on this before? Before you uh, dig in? Um, let's see. This one smells pretty weird. I'm not sure if it's the metal of the cup creating this, like, penny smell. But, um, don't love the aroma. Very dark, very black. Black as night. Um, but doesn't smell scary. So, let's try it. Mm. It tastes a little scary, though. That tastes really strong. Oh no! <laughs> so, there's something really strong going on here. I'm not sure if it's the acorns or if it's chicory or what. Not my favorite. But if I had to decide between acorns and chicory, not having tasted this last one, I would say. Ah, it's hard. Acorns? Sweet potato. What? Okay. Sweet potato. Do you taste any sweet potato in there? That, my cringe might have been the sweetness from the sweet potato. Um, okay, let's try this Ah, oh, it's really sweet. You it's don't have really to keep weird. drinking it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> it's a little acrid. Whew, time for the sweet potato. I'm a little scared of this one. Oh, that's terrible. That is, that is bad coffee. Uh, you can smell the sweet potato. The, the aroma isn't that bad. Uh, it actually smells kind of nice, but it's not good coffee. This is, this is terrible. <laughs> I'll remind you of what you said during the coffee live stream. Oh, man. Yeah, those are the chickens coming home to roost. Uh, <laughs> Well, maybe not, because I haven't tried the acorn yet, and the acorn was pretty scary to make. Uh, but yes, I, I would never willingly drink this coffee. Uh, it's pretty bad. <laughs> All right. It smells bacony. It tastes like bacon water with a little bit of tannin in it to me. It's, oh, no. <laughs> it doesn't taste like coffee at all to me. It would have to be maybe even hotter than it is right now. Um, but yeah, I'm not getting a coffee vibe from this. Now you may have guessed from just the process of elimination, but uh, what do you think? Which one do you think this is? It's whatever you did with bacon grease, for sure. That is the acorn coffee. Very mild, not great. <laughs> But it tastes watery. <laughs> Acorn coffee. Uh, that's not that bad. Um, it is really tinny. It's got kind of a metallic taste to it. Um, this is closer to gas station coffee than the control. Uh, this is something I, I would not be surprised getting uh, on a road trip. Um, It's very nutty, uh, which I guess makes sense. And it's very bacony. The bacon grease really does come through, and I'm not a huge fan of that. Uh, I mean, I like bacon, and I like coffee, and I'll have them together, but, like, drinking bacon is weird. Uh, so, not a huge fan, but I'm also not as disgusted by it as I thought I would be. So, Jake was right. Uh, <laughs> Acorn coffee is definitely, or rather, I was right, wasn't I? Uh, didn't I say it? Or no, it was... Now I'm confused. This is, my whole world has been turned upside down. I'm having caffeine at four in the afternoon. I don't know what's happening. You said sweet potato sounds good. I thought I, I said the acorns did. The worst one. Oh, acorns. No. Actually, that doesn't sound too bad to me. You are crazy. So if you had to rank these, how would you rank them? Um. Okay. If I had to rank them, I would probably put... The sweet potato coffee at the bottom, followed by the 
this one with the acorns, followed by, let's try this one again. Hmm. Followed by this one. And then this one, basically, just the milk is overwhelming. <laughs> so, which is good. It, it's to its credit. Followed by the modern coffee. So you would take straight coffee over any of these? This one might edge it out some days. If I didn't know that it was a substitute for something, um, it honestly just tastes like a milky coffee drink to me. Well, thank you very much. You're welcome. Yeah, so how would you rank these? Uh, hmm, okay. Um, I think that I would put the substitute creamer first. Uh, then I think the essence of coffee with milk uh, was actually pretty good. Um, control coffee. Then acorn. And finally, sweet potato. That should just be dumped straight into the sink. I'm not a fan. <laughs>